Paul. All right. This is the uh, meeting for the Ad Hoc Cable Advisory Committee, committee. Um, 6 p.m. on February 23rd, 2021. Uh, uh, Bob Rachek, Chair, uh, Paul Connolly, and Sue Fox members, Gene Nielsen, Secretary, and the meeting is being recorded. And attorney? An attorney. Dan McKellick. Dan McKellick. Sorry, Dan. It's okay. <laughs> I, I it's been a while. Day and I can't see anything. So. Okay, now Susan, can you read the opening of the meeting, please? Sure. Meeting notices pursuant to the governor to the governor's Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. G L C three zero A dash eighteen dash and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Board of Health will be Oops. conducted. Sorry, this meeting of the, the cable advisory <laughs> committee <laughs> will be conducted via remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information, the general guidelines for remote participation can be found on the office of the AG webpage at www.mass.gov guides resources during COVID-19 open meeting law. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted. Draft minutes will be posted on the town's website as soon as possible after the meeting. Pursuant to M. G L C 30 A 20 in an emergency, a public body shall post notice as soon as reasonably possible prior to the meeting. Notice shall be printed in a link legible, e easily understandable format and shall contain the date, time, place of the of the meeting and listing of topics that the chair reasonably anticipates will be discussed at the meeting. Okay. Now it's all yours, Bob. Thank you, Sue. Um, Gene, do we have anybody here from the, um, uh, from Comcast or no? No, I did not extend the invitation. Um, the only letter I, I, I have was for Eileen Leahy, and I believe I sent that to you. That was a letter dated January 29th, Xfinity. Now, she did not have an email address on here, and I didn't you know, know whether you wanted to do a preliminary and then invite her to the next one or invite her to this one. So I did not. No, nope, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so that was really my agenda. I had some questions for Ms. Ms. Lee for Comcast um, uh, relative to revenue generation, number of customers, and, and things like that. Um, but uh, the only other idea I had was I, I think because we're all the same, uh, Paul and, and Sue, you know, I was chairman last time. I certainly want to open it up. If, if anybody would like to be chair, you're more than welcome. We can have an election among ourselves to do that. Oh, we I did so well. Bob <laughs> I second it. Okay. All right. <laughs> we love a volunteer, Bob. Yeah. All right. Now yeah. you have to take a roll call vote. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, we have any discussion? No? Fine. All right. So, uh, okay, the, all those in favor of Bob Project being chair, say aye. Oh, wait a minute. Hold it, roll call. I'm sorry. Bob Project says aye. Paul? Aye. Sue? Aye. Thank you for your vote of confidence. You're welcome. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I, I really didn't have anything else, Gene, other than what I really wanted to talk to Comcast because we're in the same position. Dennis, correct me if I'm wrong. We're still analog on channel 15? Or no, we're, 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 uh, we're digital on channel 15, but 
it's not high resolution. It's uh, one channel. We didn't make, after the last negotiations, we didn't make any progress. And you've done this enough times, Bob, you know that it's a one-sided deal here that we really don't, it's kind of a waste of time. So um, did we, so we upgraded to digital or they upgraded us to digital or we took funds out of our, our, the yeah, it was a combination. It was a combination of they have to do certain things, but we have to pay for it. So, you know, there's they, they have to do the work, but we have to pay for it. So we need we need to separate channel 15 from the rest of the building. Hey, we have it set up now that if channel 15 goes down, which happened, we had a glitch. It takes down the town hall, the fire station, the police station and all the phones at the same time. We, I, you know, we discussed this with Wally Computer and with everybody that they need to be on a separate firewall so it's isolated. So if a small, it's a, it's a small little loop glitch happened and it took down everybody, and that shouldn't. I don't. You know, we need to. I don't know. It's a few thousand dollars. I don't know if we have to have Comcast do it or if we can just do it ourselves. But there are things. Are that, you saying uh, that Channel 15 caused everybody to go down? That's what I'm saying. And you don't know why? Just a glitch? No, we know why it happened. Eventually, we traced it back, but it was just a glitch, a loop in the system. But why a loop in Channel 15 would take down the, the police station, the town hall, and all the phones is beyond me. It should be on a separate firewall. So that if something happens to it, then nobody else is impacted, you would think. Is it connected by a network? Yeah, it's connected. They when they put the new security system in town hall, some reason they found it was more secure to have everybody on the same firewall. And did Comcast do that or a separate entity? That was our town did that. I think Wally Computer uh, did a study and they did the whole deal, and that's what they came up with. But when I had the when the guy from Wally came in from. The eastern part of the state when we had the, the glitch when the channel 15 took the system down um, he was recommending getting a new new channel 15 there was nothing wrong with channel 15 it was just a glitch in the system but at that time i talked to uh pete cowles from westfield and you know i talked to these people a lot because they're in the business that they do it a lot more than i do and he said absolutely get separated you know get your own firewall put in that request to Wally computer to the person that came out, put it into the select board. And this is uh, it's probably almost a year now that this happened. It hasn't happened I, again, thank goodness, but it could. I, I don't understand how that's a Comcast issue then. Um, I am not sure that it is or isn't. That's we, I asked Wally computer to tell us what we needed to do. I don't think, I know Comcast isn't gonna pay for it. They, it'd be nice if they did, but I know they won't. But I so don't know. It's me more like a, a Wally computer. The, yeah. If the town did it and they yeah. commissioned Wally computer to do it, then the town needs to go to Wally computer and figure out that stuff. I mean, it's I- It's not a network, I, it's not a Comcast. I realize it's not, a, it's not directly a Comcast issue, <clears throat> but it does affect the entire system. And it could be a compact <laughs> issue, something, if it was possible to negotiate with them to get something out of them. But we've all been here before. And <laughs> I don't think the, the last time it was just, you know, we, I thought we just spent a lot of money on lawyer fees that got us nowhere. Well, I, I mean, I can see <laughs> going. Sorry, Dan. Dan. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan. You can laugh. <laughs> you invited me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, you know, that, that okay. is, if you can tell me something different, I'd love to hear it. Say, yeah, yeah we have we have negotiating. We could do something. We could get something out of them. But it didn't. It, that's not what I heard last time. I was on the committee last time. That's not what I heard. That's not what happened. And it was just a, going through the motions. Yeah. Well, I guess why don't we? I mean, it's probably a good time to just recap. You know where we are, what we have, and um, you know what we can really negotiate in these deals. As we talked about last time, these, these are heavy regulated um, contracts. There's a lot of federal law involved, so there's not a lot of wiggle room, okay? 
the reasoning behind that is, you know, at some point, you know, Comcast or its predecessor in interest, okay, went Ooh, through. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that, Dan. Comcast or its predecessor in interest. So I, I grew up in Springfield. It was Continental Cable Vision right, right. that uh, started, yeah. put it up over there. Yep. So, and then was bought out by, you know, Comcast. So whoever that was invested a lot of time, energy, attention, and money into setting up the infrastructure for Comcast, okay, for the cable to be delivered to the home, okay? And that's why there's a lot of uh, deference to that market entry person, all right? And whoever put the, whoever laid down the dough for the capital improvement, okay? So generally speaking, there's a presumption of renewal on these agreements because of that, okay? And there are options. It is a non-exclusive license, Okay, but the reality of it is, you know, for the town, is some other cable provider going to come in and line up all the poles and set up all the easements and, you know, do all that kind of crazy stuff? You know, when we met last, you may recall, I didn't have cable where I lived. And I told you I would never have cable where I lived because of the, the cost is like $140,000 quarter mile or something it's ridiculous but uh we do have cable actually now right. a grant from the state um that came through and they decided to put it up over the mountain and because uh, we have a municipality of 850 people on a good day you know so nobody would want to spend that money unless it came from somewhere okay because they just don't get enough feet and then in big municipalities um, mostly you'd find out east near Boston, there are actually several cable providers that feed those systems because it's, there, there's enough people out there that everybody can eat, okay? So while it's non-exclusive, there's that presumption that it's gonna be renewed. There's a lot of terms that can't be you know, negotiated. Um, some of the key things, and we talked about this last time, can negotiate the amount of years. Last year, we toggled between three, five, and, and 10, okay? Comcast wanted 10. Um, you all wanted three to start with, but then realized that, you know, after 18 months, we'd be starting this process again, and you're sick of seeing my mug, I think. Yep. You know, so we went with five. That, okay? That's not true, Dan. <laughs> so uh, the next thing is that's negotiable is the, the peg access, okay, which are the... Um, the public access channels, okay? So that depends on programming. We had the, the prior agreement called for one, and I know that we wanted to expand up to three at the last time, but the issue there is how much original content. You can't just keep looping, you know, the same town hall meeting or the, the band concert from school. It has to be original content and programming um, and enough to allow to to show that over the span of time that they put in their contract you know whatever it is eight hours 12 hours a day okay and the agreement last time we negotiated we had the one and then if we got up to a certain capacity they would add a second when we gave them appropriate notice okay because in reality if they tie that up that peg station up that's one less channel they can program okay with with somebody who's, you know, whatever, home and garden network, you know, you name it, you know. So that's how that works. Okay, so the, the PEG access is negotiable if we have enough content to put out there. Okay, the franchise fee is another piece that's negotiable. Okay, last time, I'm sorry, the two contracts ago, we were at a 0.75%, okay. And we bumped that up to 1.75%, okay? That comes in off the, I won't say the revenue. There, there are a couple of fees that are netted out and then it comes in off of that. And that's paid out to the town quarterly, okay? At least the last agreement. I mean, we haven't seen, they haven't proposed a, a new agreement, right? They just kind of sent you something, a letter saying it's coming up, Gene. I sent that to you via email, this um, Xfinity letter from January 29th. 
And it's a copy of its Form 500 for year 2020. And it had a little documentation. Mm -hmm. Did you but see that email? Yes, they didn't send a um, the agreement itself, which is probably a half of an inch thick or so. Oh, it's no, draft, no, I don't have that. Form of that. Yeah, yeah okay. no. So, you know, depending on what their terms are in their proposal that they offer. Um, so the, I think in going back to the question earlier about getting money, last time we were discussing a grant and we were talking about maybe a $50,000 grant. And then when they broke it down, that fee's passed on to the end user on their cable bill. And not only was it the $50,000, but there was a carrying cost on it too. And I wanna say if the fee was you know, 40 cents per user per month, you know, it was 23 went to the grant and 17 went to the carrying cost. And at that point, if I remember correctly, the commission uh, kind of stepped back and said, whoa, we don't want to tack on another fee down there, another line item, and we don't want to pay them the interest. We could probably do some of this stuff ourselves and we can up our franchise fee to help feed that self-improvement, so to speak, okay? And I believe that's where the 0.75 went up to 1.75. And then you actually had an escalator in there too that after three years, you could go up to three and a half percent because I think you were hoping to get to a second, um, a second fee, a, a second peg channel, sorry, channel, where you'd have to, you'd need more cost to support that, okay? Um, and then at the end, there's there's a total cap of how much they give. So no matter which way you shake it and, and move it, it's not going to exceed 5% of um, gross revenue, you know, less certain things, you know, fees and licenses and taxes and stuff. Um, and that's the combination of their regular old license fee that's paid to the town, the franchise fee, any grants or whatever, you know, the whole thing. I uh, would be capped at five points, okay? And then other than that, the other pieces that are, I don't wanna say they're negotiable, but they just need to be updated are the exhibits to the agreement, which usually list the town facilities that are connected, okay? And the types of programming that are on the PEG stations and um, the broadcast sites. So the school, town hall, there's one more. I don't know what it is, but there's. I know there's three of them on that grant. Um, so that's kind of what's involved. And remember, this is not about internet at all. This or phones, is, right? What's that? Or phones. Or phones. No phones. It's right. not about what channels they offer in the neighborhood and can they add, you know, Nesson or whatever. You know, it's not about that. Um, and it's, it's not about billing they're still, not, they're still not letting us pick and choose programming we still have to take the, whatever they they provide whatever their yeah, yeah their packages are if they don't offer yes network in in your area then they don't offer yes network in your area you okay. have to find an alternative mean and, um, and did you say that on that uh cable tv user fee that that uh, had an automatic escalator it had a, a an escalator option that could be voted in. I believe it had the, the select board, I think, had the voted in. Okay. Okay. I don't know that they did that. Um, I was, I don't remember being contacted. So I'm assuming it just kind of stayed flat at 175, out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. And, and the maximum on that is 5%? Total through everything. So between there, there's a license fee that they pay per subscriber, you know, maybe 50 cents or whatever. And then um, out of their total revenue, it would it's capped at five points how much they have to give back to the to the community. Dennis, you said we were up to we we did already do the digital uh, upgrade to the channel fifteen. What, what was the price on that? Do you have any idea? Um, there's a initial cost, you know, I don't know, ten thousand dollar initial cost, and then there's a yearly fee you know, the maintenance fee just to keep up on it, which is a few thousand dollars a year. 
Okay, thanks. But, but that, uh, you, know, you know, Bob, since I'm sorry, go since, ahead. Since uh, you know, since COVID, uh, Channel 15 has changed. It's a different animal now. We we're broadcasting from the senior center. You know, they're doing Zumba classes. We're broadcasting meetings. We could brought we could have broadcast this meeting tonight. So it's hard to say. You know which facilities are using because they're using them all facilities everywhere. We have lots of programs. We're working with the Agron Cultural Council with a concert series. I mean, we 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 are doing way way more now. You know, with uh, remote than we ever have. I just uh, you know I see that you know if we raise the our fees to up, then the Comcast fees go up because it's paid by the user. They don't pay it, it's paid by the user. And people are already getting, they're already freaking out because the prices are going so high. Look at Agawam. Comcast told them that they're gonna have a cap on the amount of uh, internet you can use there. And then they're gonna start charging you more fees. So Agawam is looking into getting their own cable. <clears throat> you know, Westfield has theirs that uh, people love it. I mean, we're, we're really strapped with Comcast right now. It's, uh, and they know it, you know, they know it. We've been through this of not being a monopoly, but it is. They have, the, it's the only game in town. You can't go any place else. Yeah, I mean, they're really, by default, they are. Um, have, I think I've heard some figures, what, what it would take for us to, to be in the same position um, as Westfield or joining up with Westfield or something like that, because we'd have to run our own wires and it was, I don't remember. I want to say $3 million or something. Try like about, that. no, try about $30 million. $30 million. $30 million. Actually, uh, it, uh, I, the last figure I heard, it was approximately $31 million just to do the high speed internet, just because of what it takes with the, uh, the poles, all the, Everything involved. If you want to do the whole town, thirty-one million dollars. That's a that's a pretty big big investment for high-speed internet. You know, so they just you can kind of see where, where they've got us over a barrel because it's like, hey, if you don't like our internet, then go out and spend thirty-one million dollars and put in. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that's a big nut. So it looked good, but it's an awful expensive up upfront cost. You know, so. Yeah, I almost had a heart attack. I was thinking like you, $3 million, no, $31 million. I went, whoa. <laughs> what, what, about, what, about, what about Whip City Fiber? I mean, they're going to a lot of hill towns, and it's not costing them that much money. Is Southwick on the list at all for, for the Whip City Fiber? I'm not, I'm not sure who they talk to, but um, it's going to be an expensive, you know, you know proposition just – because, you know, some of the poles have to be changed and Southwick's kind of funny because the phone company owns some of the poles, Eversource owns, you know, so you have to sit down and deal with all these people. And uh, they're, they'll probably be like, hey, sure, if you want it, then you're going to pay for the poles. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, you know. That, you find that's out exactly how it works. You have to get an easement on every pole. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. With it's... all the owners and that's, yep. you know, that. And, and that figure you gave was probably getting connectivity to everybody in yes. the municipality. Right. But you have to remember, too, that with a town of approximately 10,000 people, if you only bring it down the main drag and spend, you know, we'll go on the cheap. We'll say it only costs $4 million to bring it down 10 to Right. It, right. So yeah. Everybody's going to be, you know, pretty PO'd when they're paying for that right. improvement, right. you know, out of some bond or fund money or whatever that may come out right. of. So, right. you know, you're going to have these situations where, you know, it's hard. I mean, even with, you know, as I, as I said before, in our, our municipality, they got, they managed to get cable to, I think it's 94% of the houses, but there's still some people, they just can't get it to. You know? um, I have a sister-in-law that lives up in Hadley. She lives right up behind the Hadley Mall. They own a farm and they still don't have cable up there, believe it or not, it, mm -hmm. because there's there's more cows and sheep and goats on the street than there are humans mm -hmm. and uh, they don't pay for the stuff. So yeah, I, I, she, I think she's supposed to be getting it in a few months, but, They've had cable up there for ages, 
and they never put into the contract where they had so many years to wire the whole town irregardless. And that's what happens. You let that loophole slip in there and there's people on the fringes that will never get cable and they, and they keep using the excuse. Well, it's just like the power company. The power company has to run power to everybody irregardless. We all share in the cost. Okay. And it should be the same way with the cable. Okay. I understand that, but the people that are out in the outer fringes shouldn't be excluded from it because it's not worth their money. Look at just charge everybody in town enough. So the whole town gets the coverage, you know, but uh, I wouldn't want to be the guy trying to sell a $30 million deal at town meeting. No. <laughs> they hate me enough now because I'm the board of assessors, you know? <laughs> so. Well, I mean, let's, let's not even talk about the fact that we're in a pandemic and given the times that we're in bringing, um, a big cost like this before our town is, makes no sense. So, so just to be clear, there are two negotiating points. One is the rate and the other one is the amount of channels, right? That's really the only thing we can negotiate on. Is that correct? No, well, that's um, exactly what you can't negotiate on. You right, exactly. On any the of the term, money. The term of years, term in years, you can negotiate. The, you can set what the franchise fee is, okay? Currently at 1.75%, okay? Um, and then the peg, you can request, uh, but you have to have sufficient content and you have to be able to demonstrate that you have sufficient content right. to get the, uh, the, the public access channels, additional ones. So you can't do anything about content and you can't do anything about the price of the, of the uh -huh. Right. There's only two, two, only two items on the table that the, this committee has to decide on, and that is how much money for the, the franchise fee, and if you want to try to get a second channel, which you know I tried to do that last year because we run the bulletin board 24/7 right. on one channel with iRadio in the background, and then we have the videos on the other channel with uh, the Zumba in the music series and uh, cooking shows. And Cindy is doing a lot of stuff from the senior center. But if you wanted to try and get uh, a second peg channel, you know, I tried to put something together for you. I think uh, with this COVID and from the last time we met and how much the world has changed and how even all of us old people have to get acclimated to doing this Zoom thing. We're so used to going into a room and talking and now we can't do that. And I can see where it could be more useful to have that you know, second channel so that people could access meetings like this uh, just to see what's going on in town. And, uh, you know, cause basically everybody is doing everything via Zoom. So, I mean, it really opens it up, you know, to the townspeople. Um, so I think, you know, we can't extract too much out of them but I think another channel would probably be a benefit uh, as, we, as we move forward. You know. But can't we already use the channel that we have to do that? I mean, do we need another channel? Or well, are we just simply asking because we can? You're, you're sacrificing. Like I say, one channel has the bulletin board that has all the events going. And the other channel would have the videos. Now you can either have one or the other. You can't have both at the same time. Right. So if you want to have the bulletin board going, you can't have a video going at the same time. If you want to have a video, you can't have the bulletin board. With two right. channels like Westfield has, they have a continuous bulletin board and they have their second channel for the meetings and the videos. So they have that alternative. You can watch one or the other. It's up to you. I mean, it's just more work for me, but if you want to go ahead, go forward with that and if the lawyer can tell me what he needs me to put together for a package, I could do that for you. We're not charged for pig pen, pig channels, right? Or well, you we would, you would. I guess you would probably lose one of their channels if yeah. if if you wanted to add a peg. They might just take one away. I mean, I'm I'm sure they wouldn't take away CNN or something as important as that, you know. But uh, no, they usually have some. They have openings and they allow that. But yeah. Of course, it's valuable a valuable space that they can sell, and that's why they have those rules about, um, you know, original content coming through and not just the reruns of the, 
like I said before, the band concert or whatever it may be, right. you know, continuously. And even a bulletin board may not may not qualify. Now, one thing I remember we talked about last time, and, and I know you've done certain upgrades since then. Um, do you have the ability to do a ticker tape down at the bottom now that you're digital? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got that. Fed that all along. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, before I think when it was analog, you had a challenge doing the. Oh uh, yeah, that analog was a whole. That was entirely yeah. different. Yeah. But what Westfield? What Westfield does on one of their channels? They sell advertising space on there, mm -hmm. and they actually bring in money from the Westfield Bank and other places. And you know that could. That's another option is to to actually sell advertising space on one of those channels. Mm -hmm. yep. Correct. It's a possibility. I mean, you've got to remember too that Westfield's at least four times the size of South Lake, right? Just in general population. I don't know necessarily about households that subscribe, but you know, it's hard to, you got to look at the, the service area that they're covering. And I'm not trying to, you know, I, I just want to paint a realistic picture for you, not to, not to shoot everything down because it's my job to help you out. Don't get me wrong, but you know, just keep in the back of your mind that we're talking, you know, about 10,000 people versus 40,000. And so things may be a little bit different. Um, can you ask for it? Sure. Um, was it, did we ask for it in the last agreement? Yes, we did. Okay. Was any action taken to get a second peg channel? I don't think so because we're having this conversation. So through the course of that agreement over the last five years, we haven't gotten to the level where we've had enough original content to, you know, raise the argument again and send in the notice letter that was, um, that was part of the provisions that were negotiated last time. So I just, I just caution you, we can ask for anything. Okay. But if you're and, and if you think you have it and you think this is the right time, then what we need is a good, sol two things. First, a good solid plan for how that original content's gonna be um, generated, okay? And how much time it's gonna take in the day. And then, um, you know, when it comes time for the public meeting, um, you want as much support as you possibly can from the community who are the ones who pay these bills, okay? I believe you were the only one who, who stood up at the last meeting, the last public hearing about the PEG and the, and the PEG access. I don't recall if there were anyone else who, who was advocating, but that's your, that's your best chance too, to get the word out into the community and say, listen, um, you used to go take Zumba lessons at uh, you know, Zumba class at, at the senior center and due to COVID, we can't do that. And we've been broadcasting them. And when the world opens back up again, you have your choice whether you want to do one or the other, but we can still broadcast it because we have the system set up. And, and, and somebody might show up and say, yes, I want those Zumba classes broadcast into my living room because I always can't get out and get down to the senior center. Okay. And you have enough people who present those arguments, you know, on why we can get all this extra content that might be going now. But say in a year from now, you know, if, if the world opens back up and everyone's vaccinated and we're back to the normal, I guess, just for the sake of this conversation, whatever that looks like to you, um, you know, are they going back out to the senior center? Um, are they um, going to the athletic event that they now can attend as, you know, instead of just one family member going to see the soccer game and we're broadcasting it? on TV and everyone's, you know, cooking popcorn. And I mean, I'm watching my kids right now, not, not right now, but during this time, you know, uh, through Live Barn, through the Southwick Hockey Program, you know, and it's, that's, that's the only way I can watch it because the parents aren't allowed it, you know, so I cook up my popcorn and I have my Sprite and, you know, do, do what I got to do. And, <laughs> but when, when that, when COVID changes, I'm not going to sit there and watch it on Live Barn. I'm going to go watch my kids play, you know, so you know, it's, it's just one of those things that if you can come up with enough content and enough support for it, we make that pitch. Well, I appreciate your candidness and I don't want to waste everybody's time. These mm -hmm. volunteers, you know, spend a lot of time and I don't, I think it would be, 
probably just a waste of time to try to negotiate anything with Comcast at this time. You have the option already on the table to raise the, raise the fees. You know, that's that's the only thing I guess there is. But I, I appreciate your your candidness and your being upfront about it because you know there's no sense in wasting a lot of time going through a lot of motions when uh, we know what the results are going to be. Yeah, and, and remember too that in the agreement right now, okay, that's still valid and binding, there is an option for a second peg switch. So I don't see how, you know, the next agreement wouldn't include the potential to expand to that if they've already given us that option here. So, you know, worst case scenario, I think we end up where we are right now um, with the option to expand, not having to wait to the next contract renewal beyond that. Um, and then if, if everything comes together at the, at the right time and you have the right programming and, and the right schedules, then we can provide them notice too, you know, so e either way. That's good. Yeah, things are going to change again with, um, things opening up because I think people are going to, like you said, Dan, they're going to definitely want to go to see their child play in person um, versus watching it on TV. Um, and then, Dennis, you said that would create a lot of work for you as well. And um, so is this a is it a paid position for you to run Channel 15? I do get a stipend and... Uh... I asked for more money because I put in a lot more time now than I ever did, but it, if sure. you know, that, that hasn't happened either. So it, it's an uphill battle here. Well, again, then, you know, just talking about increasing costs and stuff with, with your time would come increase in stipend. And yeah. so yeah. that cost, um, that's another cost associated with the second channel. True. Paul, Sue, any other comments? Or any other? Oh, I'm, I'm good. No, uh, I'm good. And um, would our next meeting, uh, should we um, have? Yeah, we should, but I'm going to get to one other thing first, if you, if you don't okay. mind. Okay, um, sure. Gene, next time, if you would put a public comment section um, in, in the agenda, please, for me. Yeah, um, sorry. Like a ten, no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, we didn't have a lot of people here tonight, but we, we may get people down the road, especially if we start talking about raising fees. Um, so that would be something that would be of concern, I'm sure, to most people. As Again, especially with COVID, because a lot of people have seen their salaries get cut and, or even jobs get cut. And now to your point, Sue, um, where next meeting um may i sure um yeah. i you want me to get a hold of uh, eileen Leahy and ask her for a proposed contract make copies and send it to everybody that was actually what i was going to say oh. um that's fine gene um i'd like to know uh what 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 not that we couldn't extrapolate it back from the 1.75%, but if she would uh, share her number of subscribers, I'd like to know the number of subscribers to cable. And I'd like to know what the, you know, the total revenue that we generate for Comcast from the town. Um, I believe I have something um, that Carl sent me. It's, it states right on it. It's, confidential trade secrets now don't disclose confidential trade secrets <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but carl gave it to me <laughs> and well, i didn't want to email that to you because no, you know, we're not saying, like i said we can all we need to do is take the 1.75 that we that we generate and that that will tell you how and, and then work it back to to uh, to the total number of, the, of which that comes off, and that will give us the the revenue for the town. So it's not. I don't care if she doesn't want to provide it, or it's it's quote confidential. Comcast attorneys are pretty thorough, um, so you know if they want to provide it, you can get the information. I can get that from Laura. 
No. Okay, so I'll ask uh, Eileen Leahy for a proposed contract, the number of subscribers, and the total revenue. Right, that'd be great. For the next meeting. Now, I, I'm assuming- I'm gonna invite her. And invite her. Um, Dan, you said that, you know, the proposal should be about a quarter of an inch thick or so. Um, <laughs> Is there something you want? Kind of an example? About that. Yeah, that's, 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 that's <laughs> it. Um, I it, think it the last one was actually when I when I took away some of the stuff. This one, that one came out to this. We're, we're doing all. And it would look like this. It just says, um, you know, renewal. Right. Yeah, cable. And, and, and it might be a little early for them. They might not have... Uh, they, they might not have jumped on this just yet. They sent out the notice and... Um, and, and we're in preparations. This, this agreement is valid until September of 2022. Okay, so we have, uh, you, you know, we're, we're out ahead of it right now okay. by, by 18 months plus. So they might not have just gotten around to that. I, w I didn't think that they sent anything because I figured you would have circulated it. Um, and I thought that it was a little, little premature. Um, but I'm glad that we, you know, that you got the committee together to get into the discussions and to figure out what the game plan is going forward. And then we can see what their proposal is. And I'm sure I know what their proposal is going to look like. <laughs> so um, I'm sure we all do, you know. Yep. And, okay, uh, so I'll contact her for at least some information, mm -hmm. you know, that you wanted, Bob, okay? That'd be great. Thank you so much. Okay. So you want to schedule another meeting? Um, you know what? When when we get a re resolution, when we get a response back from from Eileen, okay. You know why don't we schedule it after that? Because there's no sense of scheduling a meeting if we don't have that that information to discuss. Okay. Once I get some information from her, I'll send it via email. That'd be great. And then you guys can decide when you want to have another meeting. Is that working? Is it, uh, Sounds good to me. So, yeah. good Perfect. Yep. Okay. Great. Okay. All right. Um, Dan, thanks. Dennis, good to see you. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? Make it. Uh, I'll second it. Okay. Um, all those in favor, Bob says aye. Aye, Paul. I see. Okay. okay.